So what we want to do in this video is take a quick look at controlling uh, users' access to our application based on the current plan that they're subscribed to. So here we have a dashboard that we haven't built yet in the tutorial, but we're going to get to this next. Um, but we have a dashboard where we can see what plan our user is currently subscribed to. Uh, so before this video started, I went ahead and created a new customer, Doug Funny. Uh, and Doug is subscribed to the Tiny5 Documents plan. And if you remember from earlier, uh, we have four different plans that our user can subscribe to, uh, with the biggest being $20 a month for 20 documents in the application and $5 a month for Tiny or five documents in the application. And so we've signed up Doug with five documents so we can demonstrate this a little easier. Uh, but just know that what we're trying to do is limit Doug's creation of documents to only five documents at one time um, unless he upgrades to a new plan or changes his plan. So to demonstrate this over here in documents I've already maxed out Doug's plan so he's got five documents created and what we want to do is try to create a new document um, and block that creation because he's already hit his plan limit so you're only allowed to create five documents the sixth one should be blocked. So if we go to new document here, and we say new doc, and we're going to say this shouldn't work. And this shouldn't work because remember, we have five documents in existence, but we want to block the sixth because it's over the plan that Doug is currently subscribed to. So if we hit add document, aha, so you have to upgrade your plan or delete something uh, before creating any new documents. So question is, how did we do that? Uh, we haven't looked at this yet, so let's check out the code. And so what we've done to do this is we've written this module called Validate Document Quota. And so this is following the exact same module pattern that we saw uh, in the last step when we were signing up users. Uh, we create individual methods uh, wrapped in such a way that if they fail for some reason, we can reject that module and control the, the overall flow of things. Uh, and the way that we're using this is back here in our method. And these are the default methods that ship with base. So remember, we're using a copy of base to build our application out. Uh, so we already have these methods on hand. Uh, and specifically, we have the documents.upsert method here, uh, which is responsible for two things in base. So this allows us to both create and update a document in base uh, with the same method. So we don't have a separate documents.insert and documents.update. We just have one method for both, and then we use a little bit of conditionality, conditionality uh, based on what we're passing from the client to trigger uh, whether or not we're trying to create a document or update an existing one. So when that process happens, what we want to do is validate the document quota that a user is allowed to have access to. So in reality, this will mean we call this method no matter what, get the, the user's content from the client. But before we actually perform, perform the upsert, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, validate whether or not this user is even allowed to perform the upsert. We don't know yet. And so that's what's going on in our module. So if we jump back over there, we can see we start out, and again, we're following the module pattern here. So if, if you're not familiar with that, make sure to uh, check out the link. We've linked it below in this video. Uh, but also make sure to, to click on the link in the post because we've we brought it up a few times. But following the same exact pattern, what we're doing here is we're calling a function handler, which is handling the process of validating the document quota. And so inside, what we're doing, we have to account for two things, either the updating of an existing document or the creation of a new document. And when it comes to our plan data, we only really care uh, if the user is creating a new document because that's where the quota comes into effect. And if they're updating an existing document, that's fine, the document already exists, we don't, we don't really care. And so we can see this happening inside of our handler function. So the first thing we check before anything else is we say, okay, is a document ID passed? And if that document ID exists, that means that we're trying to update an existing document. And we know that because we wouldn't have an ID already in, in our possession if we were creating a new document. That's chicken before the egg. So here we can say, okay, if there's a document ID, just go ahead and resolve this module. And when we say resolve, what we mean is go ahead and let this pass through and fire the then callback. And remember, all of our methods are, or excuse me, all of our modules are promise-based. So we have the then callback, 
which is just firing document.upsert. So again, if we're just doing an update, we don't care, go ahead and let this pass through and perform the upsert. Now, where this does come into play is if we're creating a new document. So if we do not have a document ID, our else statement is going to fire, and that's when we want to start to look at, okay, does our customer have the necessary requirements even to create this? So the way we do that is first, we take in the user ID of the user creating this. So if we look here, we've got this dot user ID being assigned to document R, but we're also passing it individually or independently to validate document quota. So we have the currently logged in user, and then back at our module here, we're saying get customer. So we want to get that customer. We do that up here. We just do a simple find one for a customer where their user ID property matches the user ID we've passed. And here we're using ES15 shorthand, which allows us to uh, skip having to do this. So if we're automatically going to pass a variable with the same exact name as it'll appear on the stored object, uh, and when we say stored object, we mean any object. So this pattern applies to all JavaScript objects. This isn't just, uh, in this case, a MongoDB call. This is all objects. But in this case, the stored object has a property with the exact same name as the variable that we're passing. So if we pass this as user ID, notice this would fail. Our, our linter here is throwing a fit. Um, but if it has the exact same name, it's basically saying, OK, I'll just automatically assign the value of user ID to the property user ID on this object. In this case, that's going to return the matching customer for that user ID. Now, once we have that user ID, what we're doing is we're trying to figure out, OK, what limit is this customer assigned to? So keep in mind, when we're talking about customers, we haven't stored any plan data outside of the plan ID that they're currently subscribed to. So we don't know what the limit is on their documents. So we need to create that. So if we look at the top of our module, we've mapped this out in this object, plan limits. And so plan limits has each of our plans by name, and then returned from each uh, property, we have the number of documents that that user is limited to. So in this case, uh, Doug is subscribed to Tiny. So down here, when we call plan limits and then we target the property in that object that matches the plan ID stored for the customer, for Doug, we're going to get back tiny5. So if we go back through this, we can see, OK, we have the limit. And now what we need to do is say, OK, is that limit met, or is it fulfilled, or are we over it, or where are we at? So the way to do that is we have to find all the documents for the current user first. So here we're saying, OK, get all of the existing documents. So documents.find. And remember, we have an owner field on all of our documents. And so we pass in the user ID, and then we just call the count method on our find. So this is just going to return a number of however many documents are in the database with the owner field equal to the user ID that we've passed into our module. And again, we're passing that here. So current user ID comes in. We're using it here to say, find all of the documents matching that user and count them up. The next thing we're doing is we're saying, OK, well, that's only part of the equation. We also need to account for the fact that our customer may have already canceled their subscription. Uh, we haven't looked at this yet, but we're, we're going to work with toggling uh, the subscription status later, so it's important to bake this in now. And we already know what the different types are. So in that case, what we need to know is, is the customer subscription active? And we know that it is active if its current status of so the current subscription status, we look here, customer.subscription.status, is equal to either active, meaning it's just active, they're, they're paid up to date and the subscription is active, uh, trialing, which means that, OK, uh, they've subscribed, but they haven't fulfilled their trial yet. And remember earlier when we were defining plans, we gave them a one-day trial. So they could be in this in-between state, which still means their, their subscription is active and they're allowed to use the app, but you know, they're kind of in the, the limbo state. And then canceling, which is another form of a limbo state, but what this one is saying is, OK, they've canceled their plan, but they have time remaining on the subscription. So technically, they're still active, but they're in this, again, limbo state. Um, but this time, it's because they're ultimately going to cancel their, their plan. So if we detect a status of any of these types, so active, trying, or canceling, what we're going to do is return false. 
or excuse me, we're going to return true if we detect one of these and false if we do not. So we use an index of greater than negative one. And so what this is saying is if we detect this status that we're passing in in this array, we're going to return true, meaning yes, the user is active. Uh, if we don't, we're going to return false. So we see this all coming together right down here. So we're checking if the user is not active or existing documents, the number of documents we found for that user, is greater than or equal to the current limit. So we do this as kind of a, a safety check. We don't want to say equal to because we could get in a weird limbo state where we've you know, accidentally inserted too many documents for a user um, and they try and create another one and so this would fail. So what we're saying is it has to be greater than or equal to the limit that we pulled off of plan limits up here. So in this case, we want to see if Doug has greater than, so more than five, or an equal number of documents to five. Uh, and so if this fails, meaning, okay, subscription's not active, or yes, um, he does have five or more uh, documents, meaning it's, it's greater than or equal to the limit, we want to reject this and say, upgrade your plan or delete some documents before creating anything new. And we saw that back on the client. So when we call action.reject, what's happening is it's popping out back here in our method in the catch statement of our call to validate document quota. So we say throw new meteor error, uh, and error here is equal to the error message that we passed to reject. So that's why we saw this exact message on the client, is we literally sent it from the server back to the client via this throw. And so because we're returning our call to validate document quota, when we throw, we're returning that back to the client, which will pass as the error callback on the client. And if we go ahead and look for that, so let's go ahead and see if we can find, hmm, where would this be? So this is going to be in Components Document Editor. So if we come in here, ah, right, we're using this Document Editor module in base. So if we go to our modules, we say Document Editor, you can see here, Upsert Document Call, we try and upsert the document, which again is either creating or updating an existing document. And if there's an error, we just pass the error in here. Or excuse me, we pass it in here. So again, the error here that we're calling to, so error.reason, is coming from our method here, which is coming from our module, back in validate document quota, here. And that's it. So what this is going to do now, every single time a customer tries to insert a document, it's going to check this and see okay, do they have the necessary requirements to even create this, or do they need to upgrade their plan or delete documents? And so we've already seen that we can't create a new document. We haven't met our plan limits. So if we go back to our documents list, let's go ahead and delete one. So we're, we're, we're not going to upgrade our plan just yet. We're just going to go ahead and say, ah, I, don't, I don't need that one. We'll, we'll create a new one. And now we'll try and replace it. Document new after delete and say this should work okay. And so we haven't changed anything, we've just deleted a document, which gets us under that quota. And notice, now our document works. So that's the basic process. All we need to do is check, based on our user's plan, do they fulfill some quota. So this will change based on your own application. Uh, but here, our, our simple usage metric is, have they met this quota or not?